Hi, my name is Damon and I'm the lead product trainer for SoundOff Signal. Today, I'm here to talk to you about the update to our LightBar software version 4.8.0. Well, we've got a couple new features that I want to discuss and make sure that everyone's aware of how to use them and why to use them. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into the software and take a look at it. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a brand new program opened up on the screen right now. And I'm focused on the Enforce exterior light bar type, which is shown up here in the uh, top left. Now, the only change to this screen at this point is down here where it says Cruise 1 Keep On. There is now in parentheses Flash Over Cruise. That's kind of a new um, way of looking at what it does. When you trigger Cruise 1 Keep On, really what it's doing is it's allowing the light to flash its pattern with the cruise light running in the background. If it's checked, you're going to see both the cruise and the flash pattern, and it'll be going back and forth, so you get that high-low effect. And then if it's not checked, what will happen is when you have your lights cruising and then you start flashing them, the cruise will actually just shut off and it'll stay off uh, for about a quarter second until after the flashing stops working. Now, if we switch our light bar type over to an M-Power, and I'm going to do an M-Power light bar, set it up as 44-inch. Now you're going to notice that there's two different types of cre uh, keep cruise on. So there's a, a flashover cruise for level or for type one, and there's a flashover cruise for type two. So you can select where one of them has the uh, you know the high low effect going on, and the other one doesn't, and that gives you different options of how you want to set up your light bar and how you want to set up the back of it or the front of it or whatever you're going to use it for. So that is a new feature. Um, it, it does expand the ability of the sound off signal light bars. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this light bar up as a red, white, blue, white. And then I'm going to modify a couple modules here in the back. I'm going to go ahead and make those red, blue, white so they have brake function as well. And I'm going to jump over to flash patterns. That's where the majority of all the changes are at. So Now at this screen, at a glance, um, mode one, there's actually no changes at all in mode one. So I'm going to go ahead and set mode one up like a normal light bar. I'm going to go ahead and give it the uh, slow runner pattern, and I'm just going to do single color on each side. I'll set up mode two as well, and I'll give that one inner cycle. And I'm going to go ahead and do mode three, and I'll set that one up as warp one, two, three. So I've got a good pattern progression um, set up, and I, and I can use that. You know, this can be with or without blueprint if you want. So you may notice that there's this new option down here called Pattern Override Mode. I'm going to go ahead and go to Mode 4, and then I'm going to click that. What a Pattern Override Mode does is it allows you to select specific modules that are going to be affected by that particular mode. So what I mean by that is if we look at this slide here, we've got Mode 3 active right now, and it's flashing the Warp 1, 2, 3 pattern. And I'm going to select a couple modules on the back of the bar to be part of mode four. And when I trigger those, they're going to go to flicker break. And so what's going to happen is the rest of the bar that's not part of mode four, part of the override, is going to continue doing what it was doing already. In this case, it's mode three. So jumping back over to the software, okay, all we have to do is select a couple modules in the back. And in this case, it was rear end board one and rear end board two. And I'm going to set those to the flicker break pattern. And there we go. We're done. So that override is now set. Now, let's assume that that was like a, a standard break override. That's going to override any modules that are currently flashing. Really what it's going to do is it's going to override rear end board 1 if it's already flashing and rear end board 2 if it's flashing. Now, if we were to go look at mapping, uh, let's, let's go ahead and um, get that one out of it. Level one, it's already got some, you know, inboard one and two flashing, and it's got the rear corner flashing as well as inboard three. I'm going to go ahead and make my blue white wire my uh, my trigger for that brake function. So when I turn that on, mode four is going to activate, and because slide one is currently active, and specifically inboard one and inboard two are uh, specific currently active, um, they're going to override and go into mode four, which is going to be the flicker brake pattern. It doesn't mess with all the lights that are currently running like it has in the past. So this is going to allow you to create this override functionality, something we haven't had before. 
Now going back to the breakout box inputs, and again, this, this could be in Blueprint, this could be a regular input in Blueprint. Um, if I wanted that Mode 4 to always do the brake lights, I need to make sure I include turning them on. All right, so remember, Mode 4 is really just overriding lights that are currently flashing. So by having the blue white wire turn these on and turn on Mode 4, I'm creating a scenario now where it'll work with or without the lights flashing. We'll get that, that override function. Now, Mode 5, I'm going to set that one up also as a pattern override mode. And I'm going to do all the fronts. All right, so I've got all four of my fronts, and I'm going to set those also to flicker break. But I'm going to choose white color. So now they're all set to go flicker break with the white color. And if we go to breakout box inputs, maybe that'll be my blue wire, input number 13. And I'm going to have that one turn on mode 5. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do with it. So now, if I have a, let's say I'm coming up on an intersection, and I need to clear it, and I've already got my lights going, so, so maybe I'm using a matrix down here at the bottom. And that matrix, when it goes active, um, it's going to change the front of the bar to that flicker brake pattern, which gives you this really you know quick flicker, and then it goes steady white, which is a lot more, or a lot easier to see than just turning on the scene light like we have in the past. But when that happens, you know, you're going to get that, that white override to the front, but the rest of the bar is going to keep doing what it's doing. Now, if we look at this like as a layering standpoint, I'm going to show you a couple slides. So here's level one. And you can see level one is running the, uh, the slow runner pattern. And it's assigned to mode one, which really means it's not assigned to any other mode. And then we've got level two, and that's assigned to the uh, to inner cycle pattern. And I've also, I'm triggering mode two with it. And then I've got my level three, which is going to be my warp one, two, three pattern. And it's triggering mode three. And you can see how those, you know, as each one of those turns on, it changes what the light bar's doing. Now, mode four is going to be the first override. And it's going to override mode three, mode two, or mode one. And it will, uh, it'll override just those specific modules. And in this case, we're going to get that, uh, that, that flicker break to the rear. And then mode five is going to do the same thing to the front. It's going to give us the flicker break in white to the front. And the beauty of it is I can have mode four and mode five running at the same time. And they're overriding specific modules, but all the other modules are doing whatever they were doing before. So pattern override modes can actually be set up to override one another. Meaning if I have mode four set up as a flicker break function and it's running the rear end boards one and rear end board two, and maybe I want to make mode six at a pattern override as well. Um, when I set mode six, and then let's say I grab one of those rear end boards and I tell it to just do this random pattern. If mode four was active because I was stepping on the brakes, I'd get the flicker brake on the rear end board two, but mode six would take control of rear end board one because it's just a higher priority mode to begin with. So you can see there's a, there's a lot of power involved in the uh, pattern override modes through the SoundOff Signals Lightbar software. Now, to utilize this, you do have to update all your firmware on your breakout boxes. And it's going to be a per breakout box or a per light bar type to do the updates. And it'll work for any of our light bars uh, with the exception of Ford. The Ford light bars are, are excluded from this. So you'll definitely have to do your light bar uh, or your breakout box firmware update to get that up and running. But I think once you get it up and running, you're really going to like it. So definitely go check it out. Um, give us a call if you have any questions. The number down below at the, on the screen is uh, SoundOff Signals tech support. And that's all I've got for today.